Hi there, this is Bianca Lopez, and this is Be In The Know, brought to you by OWI and Tail. And we're all the way in Las Vegas, and I finally get to meet Jason, the CEO of SIFT, in person. Jason, welcome to the show. Hey, I'm glad to be here. So, Jason, you kind of have a little tip on your shoulder. You just won the Trailblazer No Award. What does it feel like? Uh, it feels pretty good. Feel like you're trailblazing I, through it? I feel like we deserved it. So. Okay, so tell me why do you deserve the Trailblazer Award? There's a pretty amazing companies and you were the one that put machine learning on the map when it comes to digital trust. Yeah. So uh, explain eight, to me why. Eight years ago we came on the market with a hardcore technology first approach to solving this problem around trust and safety and knowing who's risky and who's not and uh, when we first came on the market I think a lot of people gave us some weird looks and it was a bit uncomfortable. Why was for, that? Well, machine learning uh, one, wasn't a thing. wasn't it, sexy back then, it, it right? It wasn't sexy. It wasn't. Known. I was doing my masters, it, it, and like people were like, "What the hell are you doing?" And I'm like, "Never mind." In some, some, some ways, it sounds <laughs> scary, right? Like, yep. like you're gonna teach a machine to do your job for you and make decisions, and and it know. has this like awful connotation that's gonna take away jobs. Yeah, and and so there's just a lot of um, I think fud and misunderstanding, and we stayed the course. We stayed true to our DNA as uh, engineers from companies like Google and Amazon and Facebook. And we, I know, we really, I got to meet Kevin, which is an awesome chat. <laughs> yes, yes, and so you know, we, we really um, uh, doubled down on the strategy that um, how these big companies solve this problem internally is how the rest of the, of the world should solve it. And so democratizing that uh, and, and making that available as a easy uh, SaaS-based platform has been proven well for us. And I think the award today was just a recognition of all we've A done. recognition of eight years of trailblazing and hard work, punching and getting through it. So tell me, like, you're an engineer, I'm a mathematician. Let's talk about data. Yeah. And let's talk about this big problem. Everybody talks about a data economy, a reputational economy, how data is the new oil, the new money. The truth is, as you look under the hood of most companies, data looks like a mess. Yeah. So what are you doing to change that conversation to build a true trust model? Like, what are you using? Tell me a little bit more about. Yeah, the secret sauce of SIFT. Yeah. Everyone wants to know, and I'm always happy to share it, because the truth is that when it comes to machine learning and running you know, large-scale production-ready machine learning systems, um, you can tell them it, all the secrets. It's going to take them eight years to get there. Well, <laughs> and, and people people uh, over over uh, emphasize um, the sexy models and algorithms. You know, deep learning, neural nets, and they under yeah. invest and underweight the importance of just building highly scalable, reliable, fast infrastructure that can put that data to work. Um, you know, at scale. Mm -hmm. And you know, um, people who are experts in machine learning will tell you that. Um, the simple algorithms combined with large data sets will outperform fancy algorithms with totally. small data sets. And yeah. So we've really focused on the strategy of how do we build the rails and internal uh, systems so that we can uh, put as much data to work as possible. And what is part of that work of taking, like you work with pretty large companies and you take large data sets that are not really clean. Yeah. Right? Data comes from different sources. And one of my biggest problems that I often talk to people about, the power of understanding your user journey. Yeah. And a mind like set shift that needs to happen on knowing how do I build a trust history with you? I kind of have to pay attention to the details. And the details come in the form of data in the digital world Absolutely. today. So what is tell me some of that sort of conversation and change that yeah. you have to create. I think that's that's been part of our innovation is that uh, when we came to the market, it seemed like everyone else was focused on just the transaction. Yeah. And we were scratching our the heads. The end, and, right? You know, there's there's all this data and, and you know digital breadcrumbs leading up to the transaction and following the transaction. Why aren't we taking advantage of that and putting that to work? And what you know, made you think this, of that, Jason? I think like you're you're a co-founder, like you're CEO. I, I, I think part of it was our naivety. So we're, we're you know me and my co-founder and the early team, we're not people from this industry. We're okay. engineers at heart. We we know how to build highly scalable distributed software systems, and we had experienced at companies like Amazon and Google, you know, seeing first class how uh, how powerful data can be when you put everything to work and leave no stone unturned. And so Cohesively for us, together. Yes, yes. And so we we had that vision from day one of, you know, building our internal infrastructure so that it could scale, um, you know, across not just the user journey but also different types of fraud, and that's really enabled us to. Uh, establish a leadership position as, as the trust and safety um, you know, uh, vendor of choice and for, for companies like Airbnb, Twilio, Wayfair, Twitter. Uh, it's been really exciting to work with these innovators that yeah. see us as um, someone that they can trust. And where do you see the sort of future 
going with them or, or what, what are some of the sort of transitions and changes that you're seeing in the industry? Well, I'm always scratching my head at, uh, you know, the, the innovative techniques that fraudsters are continuing to employ. I know, and, they're and, amazing, right? Yeah, I mean, they're Like, people, if only we could just hire all of them. Yeah, well, <laughs> yeah. And, and so, so I, I scratch my head at what, at what point do we start seeing AI battling AI? At what point do we see, you know, uh, it's not just humans versus humans anymore. It's going to be software going against software. Yeah. And I don't think we're too far from, from that, that age, and it's going to be an interesting one because... Um, as everything moves online, the stakes only get higher for all parties involved. Of course. And so there's a lot of motivation for these fraudsters and often their organized crime rings, they're going to keep doing And they're going to use the best technology. They're not going to care about asking for permission or regulatory approval, right? Yeah, yeah. Which is the scary part and, I often and, find. And there's, there's so much less of a... Um, there's so much less uh, consequence too, from a legal standpoint. Mm -hmm. um, you know, oftentimes um, some of the regulation and actually the crime surrounding data sets and breaches is nowhere yes. that it needs to be. Some of the regulation was written in 2000, 1900. Yes, <laughs> like yes. It's so, really bad. So we're entering entering an interesting age where uh, the digital literacy of regulators, lawmakers, is not caught up yet to the reality of what's going on in the world. Uh, yeah, so I don't think they thought Instagram was going to happen seven years ago and <laughs> any of the data surrounding it. If you if you look at, you were in the Identity Conference, but you serve a much broader user base. Do you think that people understand the connection between data and identity today? Or identifiers I, and credentials? I, I think that people often have a uh, layman's understanding of data and they read what they see in the headlines and they just believe it kind of at surface value. I think so what is one of the big myths that you often think that people need to understand? Well, give, me a literacy, give me a literacy tip I for people. I think the everyday person should uh, just carefully consider that data is a double-edged sword. And yes, you have creepy use cases for more targeted advertising, which I don't personally support and don't ever want to support as a business. But what we do as a business requires access to data so that we can protect. Accurately, accurately protect and identify uh, high-risk users and, and help these businesses thrive and survive. And so, uh, you know, as we uh, think about regulations, GDPR has just started, uh, just, just, just the tip of the iceberg here, but how do you, um, how do you balance the, the, the situation and the, the needs of, the, of, of what's going on in that moment. And I love that because your name used to have science, now it doesn't, but it still has my two pillars of like safety and trust. Yeah. And it's not an or, it's an end, right? Yeah. And I think that people, I often say this to people in terms of sort of taking an abstraction point from a technology perspective. You can't protect somebody you don't know. Yeah. And you somebody you don't understand. You can't give them good value. You're going to buy crappy presents. You're going to be a bad listener. So why should it be any different with data, which is just pieces of us in some form of code? Yeah. And trust, trusting and uh, someone requires to, to know something about them. Yeah. And so... Um, and the consent piece in GDPR to me has still a lot of work to do. People don't understand. We all just scroll, accept terms and conditions, and off we go, right? Yeah. And so, so I, you know, I, I want to um, be respectful of privacy, but I also want to make sure that people know um, it's not all, don't throw the baby out with the bathwater. Amazing. Yeah. Jason, thank you so much for coming on the show. You're welcome. Congratulations on the Trailblazing thank Award. You. I hope you trailblaze much further on digital trust and safety. And thank you so much for watching. Be in the know, and I'll see you next time.